Hi, everyone. I'm Deb Flaschenberg. Welcome to Yoga Birth Babies, a podcast produced by Prenatal Yoga Center. We will be diving into everything prenatal yoga, birth, and baby related, hoping to inspire, educate, and empower you through your journey into motherhood. Thank you for listening. Hi, I'm Deb Flaschenberg. I'm your host of Yoga Birth Babies. And today we have a really special birth story. I guess it's actually a birth story and postpartum story because we gave, I think, equal weight to each. So the birth story is, I think the words that my guest use, magical and so exciting. And the postpartum story is so raw and vulnerable. And I'm so appreciative of Maria Amelia to share what she went through. So my guest is one of our students, Maria Amelia Mondelli. She is, let me tell you a little bit about her. So she's Brazilian. So she has a fantastic accent. I just love listening to it. So she is a Brazilian model and craft artist and now the mom of Fiorella. She has been living in New York City officially since 2021 and coming and going for the past seven years before that. And she is all about adventures all over the world. And she says the most exciting and most challenging of these adventures is beginning motherhood. I loved talking to Maria. Not only is she part of the PYC community, and I've had the pleasure and the honor of watching her move through pregnancy and postpartum, she is a ball of energy in a really subdued, quiet way. She is smiling. She's supportive. She really shows up not just for herself, but for the community and for others. And she did that in this conversation. She showed up, I think you're going to get a lot out of this, but she showed up and showed the residents at the hospital birth in a way that they may not often see. And then she shows up for the community and for herself by talking about the bumps that she had in postpartum. So I just appreciate Maria's open and honest conversation that I think will help and support so many out there moving through pregnancy and postpartum. So thank you, Maria, for all that you offered in this conversation. Now, before we get to this conversation, just some stuff happened at PYC. So we added another in-person class. So while that may not sound like much, let me give you a little context. So for years and years and years, remember the studio has been around for 21 years. We had on Saturday a 9 and 11 o'clock class because they were so busy that we were able to fill two classes. Then once the pandemic hit, we dropped it down to a 9 o'clock class, just one on Saturdays. And then recently, we are starting to see these Saturday classes are filling to capacity. In fact, there's a wait list. So I thought, all right, are we really there? Are we really back? And we did, we added the 11. So while that may sound kind of silly for others, it's really kind of a big monumentous moment for us that we, I feel like we we turned a corner and we're filling these classes in a really exciting way. Again, it's all about community. So check out the schedule. We're going to have now two Saturday classes. They're also going to be hybrid. So folks in different time zones can also tune in. Um, and we, so I think that makes... Oh, I can't do the math, but it's, it's in-person classes, I believe, six days a week, and then we have our live stream on Sunday. We also are now partnering with uh, City Births to do our childbirth education, so that's exciting to see that new partnership. And Stephanie Heinzler, who's done some of our podcasts, and she does our on-demand classes, she is taking over the newborn care and lactation prep. So lots of new partnerships and exciting things happening at PYC4 in studio and online because our community is now worldwide, which is incredibly exciting. And then the last thing to share is check out our teacher training. I am so proud of this training. It is deep. It is intense. It is evidence-based. And all of us behind the training, all the teachers, we are passionate about supporting not just the perinatal community, but to show teachers the PYC methodology to have you take that to your community because we believe it really does support the community. So that's exciting. So check all that out on our website website and our postpartum, our postnatal teacher training. Then I guess the very last thing is a big thank you to you for being part of our community and listening. And I'm asking a favor that if you haven't yet left a rating and review for the podcast, please do so. It helps people find us. Okay. That is enough of me. So we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, please enjoy my conversation with Maria Amelia. Hi, Maria. How are you? 
Hi, Deb. I'm good. And you? I'm doing great. I am so excited to talk to you. Ever since you came back and shared a bit of your birth experience and how positive you felt about it, and then I think it was just last week when you opened up about your postpartum experience, I thought, let's get this lady on the podcast and (laughs) hear all you have to say. So thank you for showing up. Thank you for being so open and vulnerable. I really appreciate it. No, my pleasure. And it's always good to share our experience with everybody. Yeah, Mm -hmm. I agree. So (laughs) let me learn. I've learned a little bit about you from having you in the studio, but will you share a little bit about yourself? Sure. So I'm Brazilian. I was born and raised in Brazil. I'm also a craft artist. Um, Embroidery is my passion. And I'm a model. I've been modeling since I was 15 years old. And um, I live in different countries. I live in in Europe, like Italy, Paris, uh, London. I live in Japan as well. And then U.S. Uh, I came to New York uh, nine years ago for the first time. I met my husband, (laughs) but he's Brazilian as well. Funny story. (laughs) (laughs) And um, I was coming and going from New York And then we decided to officially move in and we got our green card in the end of 2021. So that's when I officially decided to make New York my home. Oh, how wonderful. It's great to have you as part of another New Yorker. Yes. (laughs) And your child is how old at this point? Oh yeah. So my child, Fiorella, she's five months Okay. Yeah. yeah. It and it was so great having you in prenatal and postnatal. Yeah. So let's learn a little bit about ways that you prepared for your birth. Yeah. So since I'm Brazilian, I was doing all my checkups in Brazil. And when I moved to New York, um I didn't have any doctor or anything here. I was always going to Brazil to do everything. So I found out I was pregnant. It was kind of a surprise. And I was like, okay, so what should I do now? I have to find a doctor. I have to find my healthcare provider. Um, so that was the beginning of everything. Um, I called some friends and they recommend me um, a clinic at Well Cornell. I went there and it was a nurse that would take care of me. And this is kind of different for me than in Brazil, because in Brazil, you always see a OBGYN. Uh, so then I was like, okay, so let's do this. <laughs> but um, when I called them, they said that the first um, the first appointment would be only at eight weeks. And I was four weeks when I found out. So I called my doctor in Brazil, made a Zoom uh call and she explaining everything, what I should do, what I shouldn't do. I also call my nutritionist because I'm pescatarian. So I was afraid about not giving all the nutritions that my baby would need. So I, I prepared like this. And then after I have this personality that I need to know everything that could happen. <laughs> I'm not a person that goes with the flow, say, yeah, whatever, let's see how it goes. No, I have to study. I have to learn all the possibilities. So that's what I did. I I dove deep into birth stories and birth podcasts, yours included. Um, I was listening to everything, reading books. I got even like too much. You know? <laughs> there was a point of like, okay, that's it. You need a break. <laughs> Watch some stupid TV show (laughs) to have a break. But then, um, I also started to work out. I was having like a personal trainer specialized with, uh, pregnancy. And then I found your yoga studio and I was going to, I start going to the yoga studio. I think I was like 20 weeks I was going every week until my last one. I think I didn't go to my due date because I had some checkups, but (laughs) that's how I would be there. (laughs) Yeah, you did it in studio and online. Now, I have a question Mm -hmm. on all your prep work. So I don't know if the listeners know this, but the Brazilian way of birthing is very different than the American Mm -hmm. way. In fact, I don't know the complete statistic, but it's a very high cesarean rate. So 
I'm curious, when you were researching, did you chat with your friends in Brazil and were you finding what their experience of childbirth was different than what you were encountering in the U.S.? So, yeah, Brazil, I think, is the second country in the world that has more C-sections. It's insane. (laughs) Um, But my mom had to fight for her uh, natural birth, vaginal birth. Um, She had two vaginal births in Brazil back in the 90s, uh, where it was almost impossible. So I heard her story. I said, you know what? Mm. I want to do the same. So that was the first thing I knew. I wanted, I wanted a vaginal birth. Of course, if something changed or, or have some complications, I would be open for a C-section. But in Brazil, it's like uh, kind of, um, it's easy for the doctor to tell you to go for a C-section. They even schedule, you know, okay, I'm, I'm going to be in vacation on the, on that week. So we can schedule for a week before and you'll be fine. Uh, so this was really important for me when I got here. I knew that it would be easier to fight for um, a vaginal birth than in Brazil, of course. But also my doctor over there, she's really up to vaginal birth. So oh. I was kind of relaxed on that point. Yeah, I figured that you might be getting different stories from your friends at home saying, what are you doing doing that? All right, so let's hear it. I, I'm just giving the mic to you. At some point, I'll interrupt you for a, a sponsor break, but otherwise, <laughs> let's, let's just chat about your birth story. The reason I wanted also to have you come on is I remember, it must have been around Mother's Day. I think I was doing, I don't remember, it, maybe it was Mother's Day. I was doing something online, maybe a reel of pictures, and I think I I reached out to people and you sent me just the, your, your expression seemed of such peace yeah. after your, like you just looked elated. And I thought I need to understand what's behind that smile. So I think that was the first thought of like, let's dive in. So the mic is yours. Thanks. So, uh, to begin with my birth story, um, um, I think I'll start like a little bit before Sure. I was doing the class. Uh, I did some classes and then I, my husband had to do two knee surgeries while I was pregnant. Um, I, actually that was one of the reasons that I went to your, uh, I did online classes with you because he was in bed. <laughs> oh, I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah. So it was kind of tough. So I decided to hire a doula because I need someone to advocate with me. Um, especially because the nurse that was there um, and was taking care of me wouldn't be at birth, would be only the doctor on call. So I hired a doula, um, actually two of them, Julia and Amy, and they were awesome with me with that. So when my uh, when I start like having the contractions, I called them. I didn't call the the hospital or anyone, and they were with me the whole time texting and and making me to relax because before pregnancy, I was really afraid of hospitals and blood. I didn't know how I would cope with that. So that was another reason that I was going to really deep into birth <laughs> because I want to be prepared because I knew that I would be really stressed about it. And so uh, my contraction started One day after my due date. So my due date was on Friday. On Saturday morning, 6 a.m., I had the first contractions. It was like a mild period cramp. So I I stayed in bed. And then after a while, my husband woke up. I said, you know what? Baby's coming. (laughs) So he texted doulas and he started chatting with them. I was really um, introspective. I wanted to sleep the whole day. So in between contractions, I was taking naps. Funny because I prepare music, I prepare light, I prepare like movements, everything. And in the end, I stayed in bed most of the time. (laughs) And uh, I spent the whole day at home and I was like, okay, I can do one more here and one more and one more. And in the end, I, I, this started at 6 a.m. And around 6 p.m., I called the doula to come to her house. She arrived a little bit later 
And uh, I took a shower. I said, you know what? I need to take a shower. I need to be with my hair washed before birth. So I, I even did like face mask, everything, and waiting for that moment. But I was coping really well, you know. I, I wasn't like scared or anything. Um, I was relaxed. I had time to nap. And then when the doula arrived at home, I was um, with a really bad back pain. So I was in a weird position in my bed. My husband was rubbing my back. I was everything dark. And after a while, I say, you know, I think it's time to go to the hospital. Even the contractions were really close. So we decided to go to the hospital. But <laughs> the, uh, Julia, she looked at me and said, you know, Maria, have you tried to go to the shower? I said, yeah, but it was in the beginning. So um, it was fine. But she said to me, like, no, you should try to go to the shower again. Let's do this. So uh, I jumped in the shower. Hot water on my back was perfect. But I stayed there maybe too long that my husband was freaking out because the contraction was like, I, I don't remember now, but maybe three minutes apart or something like that. And he opened the curtain and said, no, you, let's go. <laughs> Get off the shower right now because you're going to have this baby here. And that wasn't our plan at all. So we called the Uber and um, my mom was here with us as well. Poor, <laughs> she was uh, freaking out the whole day, I think, but she was handling herself because uh, I know that if, if it was her, she would be in the hospital like hours and hours before that. But anyway, the, the Uber came. It was funny because I had two contractions just to go downstairs. I live on the second floor. So I had one in, my door, in front of my door and then another one outside before the Uber arrived. We got the Uber here. The street was closed. The, the Uber driver had to move things from his car. It was like every minute was like so long that I thought I would never arrive at the hospital. <laughs> So when I got there at uh, Well Cornell, um, I was having like really short um, period between the contractions. So the the gentleman in the front desk, he grabbed a wheelchair and drove me straight away to the triage. I didn't even do check-in. was like, okay, you're having this baby now, so let's go. So when I got the triage... Um, they did the cervix checkup and they told me that I was uh, seven centimeters dilated. And I couldn't believe that. I was like, no, that's not possible. Are you sure? And they said, yeah, you're seven centimeters. I, and even the, the team over there couldn't believe it. And they asked me if I want to have an epidural. And I was a bit concerned about my back pain because it was was hurt was hurting like bad but I said you know let's wait a little bit more and then uh, we went to the to the room I sat on a ball and I stayed there on a the ball for a little bit trying to manage my back pain until I couldn't do it anymore and I asked the team to to bring the anesthesiologist uh, to have the epidural so then they told me that he was in um, in surgery and it would take about 40 minutes to arrive. And this was a, around uh, midnight. So I arrived at the hospital almost 11. The midnight, the um, I called for the, the epidural and it would take another half an hour for them to arrive. I was really scared about this because... Uh, I'm afraid of needles, so I was like, okay, I, I need epidural because my my back pain is really, really bad. Um, so I was, during I was uh, sitting on a ball, my water broke. And then after that, everything changed. Like all the pain that I was having through the contractions, suddenly it was softer. And I have this feeling of going to the bathroom. You know, I, I look to the nurse and say, I want to poop. And she said, okay, this baby's coming. <laughs> so when the, 
uh, when the doctor arrived, uh, they, they, I was like, no, I, I want the epidural. I don't care. But they said to me, they know you need to do a cervix checkup because maybe you were already dilated and the baby's coming and you won't need it. And uh, I was like, ah, okay. I look at my husband. I look to Ardula, and they say, yeah, you should need to do you. You should do the the checkup before. So when they did the checkup, I was already ten centimeters dilated, and my baby was like almost crowning. Oh wow. <laughs> and I was like, what? No, no, this is this can be true. You know, I, I wasn't believing in everything because I was really afraid of this situation. So I prepared myself. Like I said, I, I brought all the lights, all the music, everything, thinking that I would be in the hospital for a while and thinking that I would have to to, you know, like to prepare myself for this moment. And in the end, I was like, okay, you're 10 centimeters dilated. Your baby's coming. Like, uh, okay. So, um, I look at the door and say, thank you so much, but I think I won't need the epidural anymore. <laughs> <laughs> and he was like, all right, bye. Uh, but at that moment I was, um, squatting on a bar that they put on a bed. And, uh, when I decided not having the epidural, the, the doctor called uh, uh, the pushing team and arrived at two nurses to help us with uh, with the birth. But while I was having contractions, one of those nurses, she touched me and tried to grab my leg and put me in a better position for them. Did she ask? No. <laughs> oh. Yeah, it is, was really, really bad. Because she was like, okay, honey, you should be on this position because it's better for you. When she touched me, I think I was like, we, call, we say something in Portuguese that I, I was in partolandia. That means I was in labor land, you know? Got it. Yeah, yeah. This, this different, uh, different mindset, yeah. whole other situation. Like she popped that balloon in a way. Exactly. So I look at her and say, I'm so sorry, but you shouldn't touch me right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, and she, then my husband step in and say like if you touch her everything's going we're gonna have a step back she's doing fine the baby's fine so there's no point for her to change positions and um so I kept on the bar for a while and then uh, my legs were tired so I decided to be on my side and with one leg up on a bar mm -hmm. and holding a towel And then, uh, because I wasn't having, uh, I didn't have the epidural, I was feeling the contractions coming and I was feeling everything. And it was, this was magical, you know, it was amazing. And, um, while I was there, um, the arrived, the, the doctors arrived and they say like, oh, you should be on your back because it's easier. The only thing that I could think was, oh my God, Deb should come here and do a workshop with them. <laughs> <laughs> Because they want me to be in my bag. They want me to hold my breath while pushing. And everything that I learned before was the opposite. So I was only looking at them and saying, yeah, 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 right. Yes, I will do this. And I was doing everything the opposite. <laughs> so I was like on my side and releasing my breath while pushing I was only pushing when I felt at the need of I wasn't pushing when they told me and that was another thing that our doula told her team was like um she wants to do her own thing you know she doesn't want to be what it said like a um, coach coach exactly so uh at that time I was like already like I couldn't believe what was happening you know I couldn't believe I was doing everything without intervention without any any epidural so I started laugh really really loud and then my husband looked at me like what's going on like yeah it's it's amazing what's happening and Ardula like are you okay like <laughs> yes yes I'm okay <laughs> you know I was laughing and laughing and laughing and um 
then I asked my husband to put our, the playlist that I set up for labor. Actually, I did two of them. One was for more, uh, like for the labor and one for birth. Like if my baby will be born, one of these songs will be fine. But my husband did a mistake and put the other one. Okay. So I was having fun with the music and then suddenly I remember that that was the wrong playlist and that, and that playlist had really silly songs, you know, and I was like, oh my God, you should change the music, change the music. <laughs> While I was pushing the baby, I stopped everything saying, change the music because I knew that it would become, uh, my baby couldn't be born in some stupid songs that I could <laughs> <laughs> And I like, I have some Brazilians, if somebody from Brazil listened, it was music from El Chan. So it was like impossible to have a baby with that song. <laughs> I'm going to have to look this up. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and then he was like, okay, okay, okay. But what's the playlist? So he changed the playlist and I was laughing and having fun singing. And when my baby was about to be born, she was crowned for, I would say, um, 40 minutes. So then was, uh, the team started to get worried because, um, I mean, she was crowned and I know that if I was at home with a midwife, maybe it would be different, but since I was at hospital and the team seems to be a little bit, um, conservative with positions and birthing techniques, um, they decided, they asked me if it was okay to push the baby. So they, but the doctor only put her hands on me and pull the, uh, push not pull the baby. So she pulled the baby and that was the only time that it was really painful, but, uh, it was okay. And then my baby was born at one fifty two. I arrived at the hospital around 11 and she was born at one fifty two. Oh, wow. And I, I didn't cry. Uh, I was, in like in another word, only laughing and singing even after that. So it was magical. And then my doula asked me like, how, how was it? Like, what are you feeling? Uh, the only thing I could say, it was like, I can't believe it. I did this. Like, it was amazing that I, I did everything without the epidural and I never thought, and not in my, like when I started studying about birth, uh, I was pretty sure that I would be asking for epidural, like I did, but you know, and I should not have it. But I never thought that it would be possible to have a baby like this, natural, like no epidural, no intervention, anything. So I was really happy, and and it was a special, magical moment. And I honestly, I look at my husband and say, you know what? At the same moment, I look at him and say, you know, I can do this again, definitely. <laughs> so it was uh, amazing. So it reminds me of um, a birth I did with my friend Liz. As soon as you said, you looked at him and said that. So my friend Liz, this was, gosh, her son is a senior in high school now. <laughs> she had a birth at Wild Cornell, and it was actually similar to yours pretty quick. She <laughs> heard, like... 20 weeks when I got to know her, she's like, I'm going to have my epidural now. I'm like, you got to, you have to wait until you're in labor at least. And then she went without any medication and she looked at me and she goes, that was great. I want to do that again. Yeah. Kind of like what you just said. And then her second birth, she did a birth center and then her third birth, wow. she did a home birth. So I'm just letting you know, yeah. I'm hearing some similarities. Um, <laughs> <laughs> she also then later became a uh, Lamaze teacher. So I don't know, Maria. Yeah. I, I see some things brewing in your future. Yeah, maybe. You know, it was funny because, well, Cornell, it's a um, study hospital, right? So yeah. I wrote on my, my birth plan that I didn't want any student or anything. But, of course, my husband forgot the birth plan at home. So <laughs> I got there. I just had to say whatever I want. And while I was pushing, the baby was almost born. Uh, they called all the students to see. <gasps> oh. And I think, and then it didn't bother me. But I, good. it actually was good, you know, because you know what? Can you see that it's possible to do it with different positions, different breast techniques, and different uh, 
without an epidural. So I think it was kind of good for them to see that is it possible to have a natural birth. I think that's a great way of looking at it because as med students, they may not see all those alternatives all too often. And now they can have a reference point to be like, it is possible. Mm -hmm. And the side position seemed to work well. So why are we putting people on their back? So (laughs) you might've influenced a lot of people that then can benefit down the road. If those care providers really saw and took in what you did, it may help a lot of people that they then help. So yay for you, you pioneer. (laughs) And then I was like, you know what? It was kind of good that they saw that this could happen. Yeah. It was not like, uh, I didn't see in a bad way in the end. But of course, at the beginning, I was afraid because I, I'm, while I was in birth, I was really introspective. So I didn't want a lot of people in the room. But in the end, I don't remember half of it of people that were there. So it was fine. Like, you know what? Let people see, let people learn. And Oh, that's a beautiful way of looking at it. All right. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, let's talk about heading into postpartum. Okay. Okay. We'll take a super quick break. We'll be right back. All right. So we're back. We left off that you are in a great mood. You had a very magical experience, which just puts a smile on my face to know that you had such a positive experience. So where would you like to pick up? Do you want to talk about immediately postpartum? Do you want to fast forward? Where would you like to go? Um, I think it uh, could be a little bit uh, right at the beginning about that. Sure. Uh, because when my baby was born, um, I realized that she had a nevo jaw jawline. Um, so her mouth, her left side was a little bit inside. Mm. And because of that, we had some issues with breastfeeding. Um, I also had a flat nipple. So I had to triple feed at the hospital. And the, like, I had a great birth experience, but then when I started breastfeeding, it was the opposite. I had some big issues. I was really frustrated that um, I couldn't breastfeed my baby really well. And then with the triple feeding was hurting with the bump at the hospital because they didn't have the right flange for me. So I had the first two weeks of postpartum in a really intense because of breastfeeding. My baby ended up doing uh, uh, going to a chiropractor to help with her left side that was really really tense and because mm-hmm. of that she has the uneven jaw and uh, I saw some I, I went to a um, lactation consulted group and it was really good they actually recommend me the 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 chiropractor but because of my flat nipple I had to wear um a nipple shield for a while. And this was kind of like, I was fighting for it. Uh, I decided not to, but then in the end I say, you know what? Uh, if babies needs, baby needs to need has, mm-hmm. And um, I decided to wear the nipple shield and I was using it for, I think until she was two months and a half until I was able to take it out. And so, yeah, the breastfeeding was um, kind of um, a tough part of my postpartum. I had some baby blues at that moment, but my mom was here. She helped me a lot. And then my mom was, um, she had to go back to Brazil. And it was only my husband and I here. Uh, We don't have friends or uh, friends we do, but not so close to the neighborhood. And we don't have family here. Um, So it was the two of us for a while. My husband went back to work and I stayed at home with our baby. And uh, after that, like, you know, you think that postpartum depression and all those baby blues, it's only when the, the first six weeks, right? But for me, it hit me now, like when my baby was four months and a half, I had a, a, a like breakdown. I had a panic attack about two weeks ago. 
um, that I was felt overwhelmed with the baby duties because I was alone here all the time with her doing everything uh, while my husband works. And when he come back to work uh, from work, he takes care of the house and the baby. But mainly, I stay the whole day with her by myself. And I had, uh, because of my stress level, sleep uh, deprivation, I had this panic attack. And it was like, I was at home with him. And then he told me, okay, I'm going to the gym and I'll be back in an hour. And uh, because of what he said, that he would leave me for an hour, I started crying and um, be without my breath. Um, so we decided to go to take a walk. While we were walking, uh, he was with uh, the baby in the stroller. Um, and I had a delusional moment where I thought that she was crying. And I can hear her cry that I, I get really, really bad. Uh, like, I start crying as well. So at that moment, I thought I heard her crying. And I start crying in the street like uh, really bad and he look at me and say like what what's going on and say like oh she's crying and then he showed me her and she was almost sleeping so she wasn't crying at all um so I say like okay I'm not feeling well uh, something's wrong with me and uh, I decided to call my mom to come back luckily she she can So she's arriving tomorrow to help us here. She stay for two months. And um, I think was that was the most hard part on the postpartum. We think that um, when the baby is a newborn, everything is new. It is difficult. I had my moments with the breastfeeding. But I think now, after five months, it was when the... I had really uh, signs of postpartum depression and postpartum um, anxiety. And uh, yeah, so <laughs> it's kind of uh, hard to say, but um, uh, I think uh, calling for help was the best thing that I did. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you Thank you for sharing that because... It takes a lot of bravery and vulnerability, but what I so appreciate, kind of like what we talked about with the students that were watching you and can be like, oh, this can happen. Yeah. You also are allowing others to realize it can happen. Postpartum, we call it PMADS, perinatal mood and anxiety disorder, isn't just the first six weeks. We shouldn't think, you know, like, oh, I have the first six weeks and then cruise and cruise through. And what you just did was give people their permission to realize that this can happen at other times and then the bravery to seek help. I love that you called your mom and (laughs) asked her to come back. I feel like you talked about a therapist too in the past. Is that right? Yeah. um, I've been doing therapy since pandemic uh, because during pandemic I was, I thought I was having panic attacks, but I, and then it was fine actually. um, But uh, I kept doing the therapy the whole time because it was a lot of things going on in my life and then moving to New York and then pregnancy. So a lot of change. Yeah, every time she was giving me like a break, I say, you know what? I think I need you one more. <laughs> <laughs> like I got another zinger for you. Here's what I planned on. No, I think you, you, I should stay with you for a little longer. <laughs> and, uh, but yeah, after, while I was pregnant, I, before I was doing every week and then I, end up doing like twice a month and now I was doing once a month but now I'm back to uh, every week uh at this period uh, because I mean it's it's important I need to to be good with myself to be good for my daughter that is beautiful so let's talk about that what are the things you're doing to take care of yourself during this postpartum time so I love that you are now seeing your therapist on a very very regular basis. You called for help. What else are you doing to help yourself? Um, Now I went went back to workout because for me it's really important. So I've been doing 
uh, some LPF, the low pressure fitness every week to help also with my body recovery. Cause that was also another thing that, uh, bothered me a lot because being a model, I had a standard body, <laughs> like it was like different than everyone else. So I was super skinny. And, and then suddenly I gained a lot of weight and, uh, my body, of course, it's not back like before, um, so this also um, bothered me a lot to recognize my body, that that's my new body and accept that. So I've been working out, not not because I want to go back to my previous body, but because of my mind. Mm-hmm. Going to yoga, the postnatal yoga, uh, like I told you, it's, it's really good. It's not only uh, exercise, it's also our sharing group <laughs> so it's always good to to do to meet another mothers um talking with my friends i have my my best friends that have kids we all have a group chat that we talk every day we share everything that it's happened we talk bad about our husbands <laughs> we talk about our babies and so i think sharing it's really important to cope with my postpartum and of course ask for help but like when I asked my mom I was in the edge so I I avoid a lot because I know that she has her own life and things but I think this was really important and take care of myself that uh, that was the, the important thing right now like my husband always said to me like we need we need to take care of you now yeah. It's fine. She's gaining weight. She's healthy. She's gorgeous. Uh, she's hitting all her milestones. And now we need to take care of you. Yeah. I'm so glad that you are getting the support and help. And it can be challenging as a parent because our babies do need us, but you yeah. put it so beautifully that you have to take care of you so that you can be there for your child. So I just applaud your bravery of, again, sharing this and being just so open because I think it's going to inspire others to do so as well. I hope so, because I think sharing is also important, not only to take care of you, you know, all the the heavy weight, but also, like you said, to inspire other people and see that you're not alone. You know, there's people having the same thing or similar situation than you. And if you share, you're just going to find, like, it's funny because when I shared this with some friends, they say like, oh, you know what? I have panic attacks as well for a while. And I never thought about doing this or that or never uh, shared with anyone. So thank you for for this. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, And thank you for letting me share with more people. Oh, (laughs) absolutely. Okay. We're going to take another break when we come back. What is one tip or piece of advice you would like to offer new or expectant parents? We will be right back. Okay, so what is your final tip or piece of advice you'd like to offer new or expectant parents? So um, it was kind of difficult to think about it because before my panic attack, I had something in mind, but um, I was... I was going to say that every, um, like I dove deep into birth and I studied and I think studying, it's always good to, you never lose when you're learning new things, you know, Mm -hmm. you always add. So that was my first advice. But now after my panic attack and everything that I've been through now, I would say that don't be ashamed to ask for help. Because sometimes we are too proud to ask for help. We think that, oh, that person uh, can manage, so can I. But in the end, every uh, person is different, mm-hmm. every individual. Um, so you, you cannot compare yourself with the others. So if you think that something is not going right, if, you're too, if you have too much, going on ask for help you can ask your friends your family or even if you have the budget to to have a support 
group and the pay for a support um, network, I would say that don't be afraid to ask for help. Mm-hmm. I love that. So this, I remember last week in postnatal, several of you guys spoke up about this. And one thing that I had suggested to another of the students who was earlier, I think she was just six weeks postpartum, having some similar overwhelm, I was suggesting to get a postpartum doula. And I remember that conversation because the great thing about a postpartum doula is you can use them for small periods of time. If you just need them for, you know, like four to eight weeks to kind of get over a hump or just to get, like maybe if your mom wasn't able to come for another month and you're thinking, but I need help now, like that's where a postpartum doula could step in, you know, and fill that gap. So for listeners out there, if you're feeling really overwhelmed and you have, and I know it is a privilege to be able to hire this one other small suggestion, um, I recommend instead of for baby shower gifts, we're taking an interesting turn here, mm-hmm. but instead of baby shower gifts of like a onesie or something off a registry, my gift to anyone that I'm able to support with this way is a few hours of a postpartum doula. You know, the, the onesie's great, you know, the stuff off the registry is great, but having another person there that has some knowledge, that's where I think the money should go. So sorry, I took a weird turn. I, okay. no, I totally agree. It's funny that it said that because I have another group of friends that some of them don't have kids and some do. So, um, one of them ask or like, Oh, Hey moms. So what do you recommend for, um, for a gift, for a baby shower. And the first thing I said was get a doula. Yeah, <laughs> a absolutely. Doula. Give them a two hours of a postpartum doula and, and that would be already something better than a pajama or whatever yeah. you're thinking about to give to a mom. You're giving a help with some, someone to take care of the house, the baby or whoever the yeah. mom is. It's so a, smart. Yeah. Well, Maria, I so enjoyed chatting with you. I know I'm going to see you on the mat, maybe even tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you for showing up as part of our community pre and postnatal. And thank you for sharing your story. It was inspiring. Thank you so much. That was my pleasure. <laughs> this has been an episode of Yoga Birth Babies produced by Prenatal Yoga Center. You can catch us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Periscope. I'm Deb Flaschenberg. Thanks for listening.